Happy Hour is presented by Samuel Adams. Savor the flavor responsibly. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Frank Isola. Wilbon is off because we're just 26 hours from Northwestern kicking off its football season. How about that? I'm Tony Kornheiser and just 27 hours away from Northwestern being out of the playoff. <laughs> so wow. I should ask you this, Frank. You have a child who goes or went to Northwestern. Graduate. You yourself went to the University of Maryland. They play each other. Where are your loyalties for this game? Well, I sent more money to Northwestern, but I'm going to be rooting for Maryland. That's where I went. My money's in Northwestern. Yeah. My heart's in Maryland. That's how I That's good. It. That's good. Well, either way you win and either way you lose, <laughs> yes. unless there's a tie, which there won't be. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the World Series resumes. The NBA could start in two months, and the Patriots could fall to two and four. But we begin today with Carson Wentz doing nothing for three quarters last night, then being great in the fourth and leading the Eagles to first place in the horrific NFC East. Wentz was down 21-10 with six minutes to play and then engineered two touchdowns to beat the Giants 22-21. Frank, I know the division is terrible, but admit it, these games are fun. Am I allowed to say I enjoyed watching that game last night? First of all, sure. you had Daniel Jones with that long run that he had, and then he looked like a little kid running downhill when their legs are going too fast Fell and down. he stumbled. Exactly. Unfortunate, yeah. And then yeah. you have, you know, Philadelphia scored twice. They were down 11 with five minutes to go. They end up coming back. But for me, the game comes down to two passes, Daniel Jones to Evan Ingram. And when you're at this level, yeah. you have to make that catch. And then, of course, the Carson. But you win the game. Exactly. You win the game well, if you make that catch. Likely they ice it there. There's still two timeouts, and you did have the uh, two-minute warning. But the Carson Wentz pass to Boston Scott. You know, he, he made a great throw. Boston Scott made a great catch. Yeah. That's what the game came down to. That's what these two teams came down to. Am I correct in this? I heard this this morning. That, that he's only five foot six. It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's hard to fit it in yep. to five six over another guy's shoulder. It was a great catch. It was a great pass. Let me get to Wentz for a second because Wilbon hates Wentz. <laughs> he thinks he's the most overpaid bum in the history of the world. But here's what Wentz has done in the last two weeks. He made comebacks and once against a good team, yep. against Baltimore. And okay, last night was against the Giants. But in that period of time, in those two fourth quarters, he has led his team to like 34 points or something like that. You know, he's been really, really good. Five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Yeah. That, that's a big-time deal. Look, last weekend, the, Gi not, the Giants played Washington. That game came down right to the end, right? I, I mean, it's a two-point failed conversion. You go for the win. The Dallas games, all of them that's are right. fun to watch, especially when Dallas gets beat by 300 points. <laughs> uh, Philadelphia at the moment could get hot because they got a lot of starters coming back. And by getting hot, I mean they could go to 6-10 and 10 eventually. <laughs> I, it, it is in my DNA, that, that division, and I, don't, I know it stinks, but I like to watch it. You know, the last time the Giants won the Super Bowl, they did go 9-7. and seven. Let me ask you this, though, because you know about the Giants yeah. and what they mean in New York, and it's old yeah. money, it's Manhattan, it's Connecticut that roots for the Giants, as well as New Jersey. Do you realize that since they went 11-5 and five, in three-plus seasons, they are – 13 and 42. 13 and 42. This is the New York Giants also, we're talking about. It, in the last four years, I believe, they're 0 and 15 against Philadelphia That's and right. Dallas. That's right. And, and it's not just the Giants. The Jets are even worse than the Giants. So if you are the commissioner of the NFL, are you personally affected by the fact that the two teams in New York are dreadful? Does that hurt the league? It's a question worth asking somebody. And it definitely does. How about Daniel Jones? I actually thought he played pretty well, but he has 34 career turnovers in 20 games. 19 starts. 34 turnovers. You're not Frank, he had another fumble last night. I, I believe that is 16 fumbles lost in 19 starts. Yeah. And yet, if Ingram catches that ball, they know, win the game. I know. You're right. You're right. All right. Well, after a night off, the World Series is back on tonight. The Dodgers send Walker Bueller to the mound who has an ERA this postseason of just 1.89. But hang on a second. Charlie Morton will be going for the Rays, and his postseason ERA is less than a third of that. Get ready, 0. Yeah. 0.57. The Rays even things up at a game apiece on Wednesday night. Tony, who needs game three more? 
So, uh, you know, I think the Dodgers are the better team. Yeah. I think they hit a little bit better and all of that. And I, I'm, I'm not going to back away from that. I think if they lose tonight, the Dodgers, they lose the series. Really? Because I look, I, I ask myself, who's going to get wins? They have two starting pitchers. That's all they've got. They've got Bueller and Kershaw. They're only real starting pitchers at this point. So even if they each win one more, that's three. Where do they get the fourth game? When Tampa goes to a bullpen game, that's what they're bred to do yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, they are built to go to five pitchers and do it that way. When, when the Dodgers go to Gonsolin and May, it, it looks like, well, this is, this is not working. So even though the Dodgers have come back from 3-1, I think they have to win this one. Yeah. And it's hard to beat Charlie Morton. I know. It's, it's hard to believe that a team with a payroll like that has a bullpen game in Game 2 of the World Series. It, 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 it's just amazing yes. how much the sport has yes. changed. But you know, I love the fact that the last time Charlie Morton was in a World Series game was 2017, Game 7. He got the last Houston. 12 outs against the Dodgers. Houston. That's right, when he was pitching for Houston. So, yeah. Yeah. So now, all season long, he's only pitched six innings one time. He's pitching to the seventh well, inning one of time. Go, and, none and of them the go thing. more than five. The last they, game, he was terrific. He threw 66 pitches in game seven in the last round against Houston. So they, Again, the, the formula for Tampa is to go to the bullpen, bullpen and bring in these guys who throw 98. That's what they do. Now, there's a way the Dodgers can beat them. You know, just hit. I just know. hit the way you have hit all year. But, you know, if they pound Morton, that's one thing. But Morton appears to be invincible in playoff games, the rare pitcher that's better in the postseason than the regular and, season, and, significantly better. And what's amazing, it, this could be the last time we see him because he's talked about possibly retiring after the series. Now, he may get another appearance, especially if it goes seven. What I like about this, Clayton Kershaw is going in game five. So in game yeah. five, he's either going to have a chance to maybe end the series or he's going to have to be uh, pitching – for the Dodgers to stay alive, or it's going to be 2-2. No matter how you cut it, on Sunday, Clayton Kershaw is pitching in a huge game, which is going to be great to see. By the way, Tim Kirchin told me the other day that Charlie Morton is an expert barbecuer <laughs> and that he brings his grills with him wherever he goes. I really? don't know if that's true, but it sounded interesting to me. Brian Windhorst and Zach Lowe of ESPN are reporting that there is movement among some NBA owners to start this coming season on Christmas Day. The Athletic is reporting the start date could be as early as December 22nd with a goal of completing a 72-game season before next summer's Olympics. Adam Silver has said he wants games played in home arenas, in front of fans, and he wants 82. The players would have to agree to anything that is suggested. Frank, what are you hearing about all this? I want to know, did, did they run this by LeBron James yet? LeBron wants – that would give him a, a, just about five weeks off between winning a championship and playing his very next uh, – you know, the next game on Christmas Day. I think the NBA is smart because, Tony, we know what happened. There were some people, the owner of the Hawks, he wanted the season. Yeah, we should be playing in July and August. Let's avoid the NFL. And I understand there's a lot of factors, but the ratings were not good. People are not used to watching NBA playoff games and finals games in September and October. They've always wanted to get on this December schedule, and the Olympics is a big part of it. The Olympics are supposed to be in late July, and it's not just about American players on the national team. They have a lot of international players. They don't want to interfere with this. I think it's smart by the NBA. You're not going to have fans in the building anyway. I get it. It's a short off season for a few teams, but let's get it, let's get it back up and running. So these are all of the questions that I have. One, I have read consistently that the Olympics may not go. Yep. They hope it goes, but it may not go, right? I, I don't know why anybody thinks that in December or January or February, there's going to be lots of fans in the stands at any arena yep. in the United States. I don't know that. The ratings weren't bad. The finals ratings were terrible. And the indication <laughs> is when you play something out of season, That's right. nobody watches it. I, you know, like in August... There's no sets in use because people are actually outside. So I have, I mean, I have a lot of questions. The one thing, when I heard this today, my first reaction was December 22nd. That's in an hour. <laughs> that is so close to right now. And I, too, said, have they asked the commissioner? And I mean LeBron James. <laughs> He's the most yeah. important guy. Yeah. The players have to agree to all of these things. Do you think they will? I, I think they will because there's two powerful players in the league. We mentioned one of them, LeBron. The second one would be Chris Paul. But remember this, too. Chris Paul. 
The season ended March 11th, so every team had off four months. And then there are eight teams, including the Knicks and the Golden State Warriors, that haven't played since March 11th. So most of the league has been off. LeBron's going to ha- have to be the guy, along with Miami and the Lakers, that'll be making the biggest sacrifice. They'll have the shorter, uh, shortest off season in the history of the sport. I would have thought that when you had a truncated, weird season like this, there would, a, there would be a bleed-over effect to next season. That you wouldn't just resume and everything would be the same as it was. Let us take a break, but coming up, will the Patriots get back to 500 this weekend? And is Sunday's game really a must win for the Cowboys? Get LeBron on the phone, Tony. You got his number. I well that's that's he's he's the most powerful guy. Yep. He is. Chris Paul second. Michael Wilbon third. The Olympics, that's interesting. Oh, well Wilbon thinks it's gonna start in March. (laughs) By the way, <laughs> Pardon the Interruption is presented by Samuel Adams from Boston with love. Savor the flavor responsibly, part of happy hour, and in part by the rugged truck and SUV lineup from Honda. Next on Sports Center at 6 Eastern, stand by for PTI's bonus topic. Is it the right move for the NBA season to start by Christmas Day? Plus, all the hype and anticipation surrounding Big Ten football finally kicking off tonight. And the deciding factors for the Dodgers and Rays in Game 3 of the World Series.